Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Praise God. What joy-filled times we live in. So often times we lament, my brothers and sisters, oh, that this day is ours. Cursed be the day that saw my birth. We feel more at home with the sob of Job than we do with the song of the Psalms. And yet our good Lord is constantly calling us out of sorrow into joy. I've said it once before, and it bears repeating. Nietzsche said, I could never believe in the Christian God. He says, I don't even think the Christians believe in him. If they did, they'd be happier. Do you believe this first reading? Oh, how oftentimes joy makes us uncomfortable, and I must admit it's a most uncomfortable first reading. But what is it calling to? What does the prophet see? He sees a time beyond this world. He sees the moment just after the end times and the salvation of Israel. And whom do we hold the new Israel is? It is the church. And it is everyone within the arms of that protective mother, carried safely through the time of trial and tribulation, and brought before her bridegroom, the spouse. And here are my young ones. Here are the ones whom the world hated. Here are the ones who have been guarded and protected. Here are the ones they wish to kill and stomp out before their birthday, and I give them to you, my spouse. And Jesus Christ loves to gather the little children in his arms. And are we not joy-filled, my brothers and sisters? Hundreds of thousands of little children will see the light of day in this country because of a decision that was rendered two weeks ago. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Oh, shall I break apart that antiphon? The world claims to bring happiness. It claims joy. It claims to bring you peace. And it's a false sense of pride. Oh, again, the time of trial we always pass through, it seems, now in the month of June. How fitting, how fitting the decision rendered. A rebuke to the enemies of God. Pride is nothing to be celebrated. It is a sin. It is a sin. And the fruit of that bitter root is arrogance. And all those who follow that sin, when they cry out with joy, it is not to God, but it is themselves they celebrate. And in the midst of that ugly darkness, which is proclaimed as the only light, a bit of truth flares up. And God says, behold and rejoice, lives are saved. Goodness is affirmed. I should have rung the church bells on that day. Oh, if only I had had something more solid to remind me of their existence. We have a recording of church bells. Praise God for it. It's something. But oh, the solid metal and the rope to pull and the reality to ring out. 
God always calls us into the substance of the matter and thus into the sacrament. And so you rejoice. You can rejoice in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health. For the Lord God is coming back. You go to the gospel reading what's going on. Jesus Christ is on his way to Jerusalem. He's on his way to save mankind. And that should be a cause of great rejoicing. When he steps into that city, it is what glad hosannas ring. And by the end, it gives way to the ugly chant of the world that we utter against the God-man in our own stupid pride, crucify him. But before he goes into his great glory and passes through the rage of the world, he sends out witnesses two by two, 72. He says, go, prepare the people. Prepare them. We don't bring them any harm. We don't come to them with brimstone and threats, crowing for their blood. We come to open their hearts so that the most precious blood of the Savior might be theirs. He says, go out, two by two. And you're in such a hurry, don't even talk to anybody on the way. Just get there. That's how urgent it is. My brothers and sisters, the devil knows his time is short. Do you? You can't take a single dollar with you to heaven, and yet the souls that will accompany you there that is the only treasure worth having, the only currency that can be truly spent, and you don't even lose it. What should you be busy about with your life? In your life, you should be busy about eternal life. And these people to your left and to your right, in front and behind, in those houses out there still, at the lakes, God knows each one by name. And he only has a few to do the job. And he says, go do it. Go get them. I like them. I love them. I want them. They're mine. They are my wife's children. How precious they are. Go let them know. Rush. Go. And you are like lambs among wolves. My brothers and sisters, it's an interesting experience during Pride Month to step into a coffee shop that is ringed with rainbow flags and you wear a cassock. It's kind of like a Jew going into a store that has a bunch of Nazi flags up. It's very interesting. I don't recommend you try it. <laughs> Makes you kind of nervous. But by God, there are people in there who need Jesus Christ. And just as any parent worth their salt would walk into a building on fire to get their sons and daughters, any person striving to be a saint would walk almost into the jaws of hell and reach in the arm and say, grab it and come with me. Because you are worth so much more, more than the world would sell you for. But I will not crawl into hell with you. I will not be Satan's slave. I am born free by the waters of baptism. And should the world reject you, shake the dust from your feet and turn away. For there are still others to be reached out to. 
and God knows his own. Should those who would tear you apart, could they get their claws into you or the teeth of the wolf? Should it still be possible for them to be saved? God can send his angels to get Lot out of Sodom. And he can still send his angels this day to grab people at the moment of repentance, even if it be at the moment of death. God loves us. God is mercy. That is why you are called to rejoice. Not to bow before the world and its threats, We don't self-scar, my brothers and sisters. We don't celebrate self-mutilation and say this is a good thing. Oh, that you may suck fully of the milk of her comfort, that you may nurse with delight at her abundant breasts. The symbol of fruitful femininity. bringing further life to mankind. And the enemy lies and rejects the fruits of matrimony, the child. And then it rejects the seedbed, the mother, the wife, the woman. And it says self-scar and reject your very nature. And men should tremble, for they stand so silently by as they destroy the women and the daughters. How shall you answer to God on the last day? It will be more tolerable for Sodom, for they knew not what they did. But you have had the witness of Jesus Christ preached to you by saints. How can Paul celebrate his scars in Galatians? Because he did not give them to himself. He accepted them like a lamb amongst the wolves. And he has kept a tally. But he will not boast in anything except the cross of Christ, to which he has been conformed. There are saints who have willingly offered up their bodies a piece at a time. And they have rejoiced in it. For there seems to be nothing more terrible. And yet God has promised to make up a thousandfold against that nightmare for all eternity. For neither does circumcision mean anything, nor does uncircumcision, but only a new creation. Allow me to speak of scars of the flesh. You turn yourself over to the Lord. And it's in his power, it's in his timing, it's in his mindset. A woman might suffer the sad scars of a mastectomy. But what was the mindset of the blade that was wheeled? Was it self-determination or self-preservation? Was it pride or was it an offering in all humility? I am not God. I am but a human being. I suffer the loss of the marks of my maternity for the sake of something greater, life. Or was it something else far more horrible? But I will not dwell on the negative. I tell you to rejoice. From now on, let no one make troubles for me. For I bear the marks of Jesus on my body. He protects, he saves, he loves, he heals. 
and miracles occur. The 72 return, and they say, even the demons are subject to your name. They rejoice. They have seen real power. Human beings shouldn't be able to trample upon these serpents and scorpions. And the enemy screams and flees. Why? Because they can bear witness. They speak the name of Jesus Christ. They do not wield it as a club, but that is how the demons feel it. And Jesus Christ rejoices and he gives warning simultaneously for he is still approaching the new Jerusalem. And he says, I have seen Satan fall like lightning. So sudden his fall. Who is this man? He makes a claim that he was there when time began. The devil in his first rebellion knocked to earth where he goes to make war on the little children whom the church seeks to fondle in the lap. This is God. This is the Son of God. This is Jesus Christ, whose name strikes terror and the enemy and causes us to rejoice. He says, I've seen him fall. He doesn't have a prayer, but we do. But it's also a warning. Pride goeth before the fall. He says, Behold, I have given you the power. You will tread upon him full force, and upon his full force, but nothing will harm you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice because the spirits are subject to you, which would be pride. But rejoice because your names are written in heaven, because you are children of God and he loves you, and he saves through you and with you because he's linked you into himself, into his family, and he wants all, he wants all to renew all in himself. This world will not offer you true happiness. It only offers you real tears. But our Savior, He's going to Jerusalem. He's going to the new one, where the day never ends, where the children never have to sleep. And that might worry the parents, but I tell you this, you are all his children, and you all know how good it is to be awake in daylight and at play, and to have your mother and your father so close to you, so attentive, so ready to tend, Oh, remember your childhood. Oh, remember the tender arms of those who love you. That's heaven. It goes on forever. What a great cause to rejoice for. This world will pass away. Christianity is not about to build the kingdom of heaven out of steel and anger. It cooperates with grace. And when that last day comes, when the good Lord does arrive, and heaven and earth do link together, you, my brothers and sisters, will be amongst the little children who rejoice. May it please God, and God bless you this evening.